Welcome to today's video where we're going to diving into a significant moment in the financial history of the global markets. No, not the 1929 Great Depression, that's one for a future episode. Today, we will cover the 2008 global crisis. The year 2008 brought about a financial storm unlike any other since 1929. It was a time of great uncertainty and fear. The global economy teetered on the brink of collapse. Millions of people lost their jobs, their homes, and their savings. But what caused this crisis? How did we get to the point where the entire financial system seemed ready to crumble? The answer, in part, lies in the housing market. In the years leading up to 2008, housing prices had been skyrocketing. This boom was fueled by easy credit and risky lending practices. Banks were eager to give out mortgages, even to borrowers who were unlikely to repay. These so-called subprime mortgages were then bundled together and sold off as investments to other institutions such as places like Lehman Brothers, Google them, and see what happened. Here's a clue. They no longer exist. Evidence no company should be too big to fail. When the housing bubble burst, the value of these investments plummeted, triggering a chain reaction that spread throughout the global economy. As unlike 1929, the global markets are much more entwined, so it wasn't just America calling in loans that created widespread turmoil. The 2008 financial crisis was a wake-up call for the world. It exposed the dangers of unchecked greed and the importance of responsible financial regulation. In the aftermath of the crisis, governments and financial institutions around the world implemented reforms aimed at preventing a similar disaster from happening again. While these measures have made the financial system more resilient, it is important to remember the lessons of 2008 and to remain vigilant against future threats. The story of the 2008 financial crisis is a complex one, but it is essential to understand its causes and consequences. By learning from the mistakes of the past, we can create a more stable and prosperous future for all. At the heart of the 2008 crash lay a ticking time bomb, the subprime mortgages. These were loans given to borrowers with poor credit histories and low credit scores, making them riskier for lenders. Lenders were enticed by the booming housing market and believed that even if borrowers defaulted, rising house prices would cover their losses. This led to a surge in subprime lending, with many borrowers taking on mortgages they couldn't afford. These subprime mortgages were then bundled together and sold off as complex financial products known as mortgage-backed securities. Investors, lured by the promise of high returns, snapped them up, unaware of the risk hidden within. When housing prices began to fall, the dominoes started to tumble. Borrowers defaulted on their mortgages, and the value of mortgage-backed securities plummeted. Financial institutions that had heavily invested in these securities found themselves on the brink of collapse. The crisis quickly spread beyond the housing market, impacting businesses and individuals globally. This chain reaction highlighted the interconnectedness of the global economy and the devastating consequences of risky lending practices. The subprime mortgage crisis was a stark reminder that financial systems built on shaky foundations are doomed to fail. It underscored the need for responsible lending practices, greater transparency in financial markets, and a better understanding of risk by both borrowers and investors. The 2008 crisis wasn't just about subprime mortgages, it was about living beyond our means. Easy credit conditions in the years leading up to the crash encouraged excessive borrowing by both individuals and businesses. Consumers were bombarded with offers for credit cards, home equity loans, and other forms of credit. Many people, enticed by low interest rates and the allure of a more luxurious lifestyle, took on more debt than they could realistically handle. This culture of borrowing created a house of cards, with individuals, businesses, and the entire economy dependent on a constant flow of credit to stay afloat. When the housing bubble burst and the economy began to contract, the dangers of this excessive credit became all too clear. As job losses mounted and incomes shrank, many borrowers found themselves unable to keep up with their debt payments. This led to a vicious cycle of defaults, foreclosures, and bankruptcies, further deepening the economic downturn. The 2008 crisis taught us a valuable lesson about the importance of living within our means. It highlighted the dangers of excessive credit and the need for financial responsibility. Building a secure financial future requires living below our means, saving for a rainy day, and avoiding the temptation of easy credit. Having a strong financial responsibility and literacy will support you to achieve this goal 
and secure your own financial future without the need to take on bad debt. As the 2008 financial crisis spiraled out of control, central banks around the world found themselves facing an unprecedented challenge. They needed to act swiftly and decisively to prevent a complete meltdown of the global financial system. Their response was multifaceted and ultimately helped to avert a complete economic collapse. One of the most significant actions taken by central banks was to slash interest rates to near zero. This move was intended to encourage borrowing and spending, hoping to stimulate economic activity. While it did provide some relief, it also had unintended consequences, such as creating asset bubbles in other areas of the market. Only the future will tell whether or not their plans have worked, however, if we followed the thinking of Ray Dalio. Another form of financial crisis will occur. The only question is whether or not it's as significant as 2008 and 1929, or if it's as short-lived as the 1989 financial crisis. Only time will tell. Until next time, stay financially savvy.